Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige, this is Seeking Alexandria, and today we're doing just some get ready with me. Um, there will probably be a little Halloween party vlog happening in the near future on this channel, before or after this. I would think after, but who really knows? And um, I figured well, why not kind of sit down and hang out with you while I do this, because this is fun. Um, and I thought it would be kind of cool to incorporate a little special friend into the mix. The Tartlet Toasted palette that was just released by Tarte. I thought we could play with this a little bit and it'll be like an unofficial uh, first impressions kind of thing. Make a little eye look out of it. I'm obsessed with this packaging. It's so, so pretty. And yeah, I thought we would kind of play with it. And then I know that a lot of you guys are going to want like the swatches and all that. So I figured I would do a second video, maybe do like a different eye look with it, kind of play around, do with the swatches and review the palette. But I thought it'd be kind of a fun way to use it twice and talk about it some more because I have a feeling I'm gonna really love this palette. It gives me some serious like Urban Decay Naked Heat vibes. Uh, just you know all those same kind of tones and oh it smells like heaven. I'm obsessed. I need to stop smelling it. I need to actually put foundation on my face. Foundation is important. Um, but you know what comes before foundation is primer page one thing at a time and I'm gonna pull up the questions here in a second while my primer sets on my face um, and starts to sink in but I'm gonna pull up the questions from the previous ones that you guys were awesome enough to give me and answer some of those all right, so in an effort to not be playing my own videos constantly throughout this video, I went ahead and I screenshotted a couple, and by a couple I mean a lot of the questions because obviously we're going to have a minute because we got to get ready. And girl, honey, it takes me a second. Where's my beauty blender? Why am I so unprepared for my life today? Okay, much better. Now, let's go ahead and do this. And you guys, I am going for like long wear as possible today. Um, so I am going in with my, where in the hell? Without my glasses, I'm literally useless apparently. Uh, for today, for long wear, I'm obviously going in Peter Thomas Roth um, stuff for controlling my oil primer wise. And then I'm going in with the Fenty Beauty, um, whatever the hell this stuff is called. Pro Filter Soft Matte Foundation. If on, if you could only have five makeup products, what would they be? Um, what is your most favorite and unfavorite brand of makeup? Okay, so my first, first question there. Um, if I could only have five products, um, it would probably be, without being too specific, um, I would definitely have to have... Oh gosh, this is hard. Well, for sure mascara, because mascara can double as a couple other things. I'd want li a lipstick, because again, also can double as a couple other things. Oh my gosh, why is this so hard? I think bronzer, because bronzer I would be able to use as a transition shade in my crease, and then I could pop a lipstick on the lid. Boy, would that look cute. Guys, oh, brow pencil. Oh, sweet Jesus, brow pencil. And because I would normally be like, no, you could use your mascara. And if you have black hair, that would probably work. Or if you had thick hair at all, I don't have either of those things. So like, I actually have to have a brow pencil. Um, and then my last one would definitely be concealer uh, because it has more dense coverage. And yeah, I think that it would work better. Um, God, that was a lot harder than I thought it would be. How did I not pick highlighter in my top five things? Oh, I might have to, I might have to reconsider that because I didn't pick highlight and I'm crying in, on the inside because I was just thinking like I couldn't live without my Stila Heaven's Hue highlighter and then I was like but you didn't pick it in your thing oh my god okay see that question it haunts you the next couple questions on her list are um, how old are you what made you want to start your channel and where do you see yourself in five years those are some great questions um, I <laughs> I'm 28 and what made me start my channel was I have like an intense desire to help and like talk to people and it's funny because I'm actually more of like an introvert now that I'm older and I'm sick all the time and I wanted a way to be able to like connect with people talk to people and still like be a part of other people's lives um without having to like go out and go to places and, and you know be sick about it and that kind of thing uh, or go be sick during it rather because you know anytime I leave the house I tend to get sick lately and it's just not enjoyable and I used to go out and I was like I was bit very active in my church and that kind of thing and it really just opened my eyes to how much I love to be there for people and talk to people and and share what like knowledge that I have on things and I feel like that willingness to help other people through whatever they're going through has just been like a huge passion in my life and so for me my channel was more about being able to have a platform to like talk and talk with people and like tell them the things in my life that 
have maybe been good or not so good but makeup came in in my life because and I've said this a little bit before on my channel but as I have more subscribers I'll probably have to revisit it a couple times um but it came at a point in my life where I was getting really 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 sick all the time and my body was just it wasn't adjusting well to medications it wasn't doing well in general and so I was constantly sick and I hated that everyone could tell that I was sick all the fucking time like everyone would be like oh my god are you okay you don't look so good oh my god are you and it was literally all the time and I just could not deal and so I, uh, I ended up getting into makeup because I wanted a way to make it so people couldn't tell that I was sick all the time. And you know, just I was trying to conceal that because I didn't, I hated it that people would look at me like a sick person instead of just a person. And it's frustrating. Anybody with any kind of like um, ailment, disability, or you know, visible type thing, it's hard because the more visible it is, the more people stare at you, the more people, you know, think less of, not less of you, but they think different of you. And I was sick of being defined by what I looked like that day. Like, oh honey, is your tumor acting up? You don't look so good. And I understood that it was coming from like a caring, loving place, but it was just really frustrating for me. And so that's kind of what got me into makeup. And then I realized that like before I knew it, I was so into like every release and the shadows and the you know, highlights and the pigmentation and the formulas and just, and learning all about the different brands and stuff. And like, I obviously don't know everything. I probably never will because I'm not like a guru in that respect. I'm more of just like a, I always say I'm just a normal person that likes to play with makeup because that's really all I am. And um, I just, I don't know, for me, that was what got me really interested in it. That was what made me love it. Um, just the ability to make me equal to everyone else. I'm gonna go in with my Beauty Bakery setting powder, by the way. Um, and that's why you'll hear me say on my channel a lot, actually, I'll say, you know, I think that makeup is the universal equalizer. And it is, You know, makeup is what made me all of the sudden equal to everyone else and they couldn't tell that I was sick they couldn't tell that I had you know big black bags under my eyes because I haven't slept in four days or they couldn't see that I had you know pink cheeks from being sick and and things like that it just it made it so I got to be equal to everyone else and not get treated any different and it's just I love that part of it so much and I love the fact that it can lend itself to everyone. I mean, there's not one person, and I was actually watching a Jeffree Star video, this was like probably a year ago now, but he was talking about how men wearing makeup for some reason isn't socially acceptable and stuff like that. And the first thing that came into my mind, and then he ended up saying it like, you know, a minute later, but um, the first thing that came into my mind is how makeup has always been such a form of self-expression for so many years. I mean, throughout the decades, women were using it to show power and strength. Men were using it on stage as like a, a form to express their music and to, you know, create an experience for their viewers and the people that came to see them perform. You know, they wanted to put on a show and their makeup and stuff was actually a part of their show. In theater, when I was in school, in drama class, they or you know after school drama but they uh that was one of the big things with makeup was it was there to portray your character and i think that as a society we're starting to get back into the realization that makeup is just like clothes it's it's so much about being able to be who or what you want to be and creating that character and for me it wasn't so much about creating a fake character as it was just becoming someone that other people didn't see differently i wanted to create a character that was myself and it was difficult at first because obviously I didn't know anything about makeup. All right, so now that I finally got those on, which by the way took a hot minute, it's like a family thing and there's, there's gonna be a lot of people here. So I'm trying to like go a little more calm on the brow because sometimes they get a little out of control and I think they're like even relatively even. So I was like, well, you know, it's pretty good. So I'm super excited to dive into this unofficially, of course. You know, I know that we're not doing like swatchies or anything like that. Um, but I thought it would be kind of cool to incorporate it anyways because I really want to use it. Now, I do need to find my damn eyelid primer, which I think just, like, jumps off my vanity. Oh, this one I really like. Um, what was it like buying a business and being an entrepreneur at such a young age? That is such a good question. I can't even tell you. Um, again, you know, if you don't know or haven't guessed by now, uh, like I just said, I do own a business with my dad. And um, I got involved, it's been open for just over eight years, and I got involved right from the start. So I was 19, I think, when it opened. Is that right? 19? Like, but I was just barely 19, I think. Yeah, something like that. Anyways, um, and I've been involved ever since. I do everything that doesn't involve, like, actual welding. So I do all the, 
office accounts receivable accounts payable so I handle all the money um, some of the scheduling the website design uh, all advertising pretty much like I said anything that doesn't involve fire although I also do uh, program our CNC plasma burn table I do all the custom sign work for our customers um, we make a variety of custom signs uh, you know like the welcome signs or the smitten with the mitten those kinds of signs you know just anything I do a lot for Christmas like people want personalized signs for Christmas presents and that kind of thing so I do uh, a lot I guess you could say um, but honestly it's one of those things where I think that I just do it all so much that it just it, it is what it is um, but what was it like starting at such a young age you guys honest to God like and I no tea no shade it was probably one of the most difficult things that I've ever done and I didn't think that it would be and it's not something like it's typically the world that I'm in while wow, that orange went really high the the world that I'm in with this I'm not one that's like oh I'm a woman in a man's world I'm not one of those like I believe that us women have had our rights and you know they burned their bras back in like the 50s for us I've had rights ever since I was born I'm one of those and so I don't think it's more of like oh my god I'm a woman in a man's world I think of it more as where I live it's a very it's th this whole industry you know welding mechanic all that it's still very male dominated which is fine that's most of the mechanics and most of the welders and that kind of thing are male um, but because of that no one wanted to take me seriously so not only was I a female but I was also you know a business owner at and I was super young so it didn't you know both of those things kind of worked against us and one of the biggest things that helped me honestly was my dad had my back when guys would call and like I would love to say that I'm kidding when I say you know men have called and literally been like you're just the office girl why would I want to talk to you I don't want to place an order with you or a man came in and said it like straight to my face like I don't want to talk to you why why are you here like go get me the man and then I was like okay you know and the guy actually he wanted to talk about designing a CNC plasma sign and he wouldn't listen to me when I said well that's what I do I'm the one that designs them so he wouldn't listen and he kept just basically bitching at me and saying well you know you need to go get the man and I was like oh okay you know so I go get Jim and I and I tell him you know this is what he's looking for and what does the guy do the, or my dad looks at him and goes oh well you don't want me you want her for that and I just stood there and smiled and you know hmm. and the guy goes oh so she's the one that does that and he like didn't believe Jim and I was like yes like of you know, of course you know I'm the I, why would I lie and so it was just it was interesting because literally you know this guy was being a complete jackass and then he realized like oh the girl I was just a total wench to is the one that's gonna make my sign and bill my sign like I get to decide how much it costs and that's fine I mean that's up to them they don't have to answer to me if they don't want to there's other places they can go um, but my dad has always had my back on that whole situation as far as you know yeah you will treat my daughter with respect you will deal with her because this is her department not mine and that's always been really good you know if he hadn't had my back or if he hadn't been willing to basically tell guys where to shove it that when it mattered then I would never have had any respect so I think that as far as my age it definitely mattered but then it really mattered again when it came to uh, my sex just because of the industry that I'm in which is fine um, I get it if you could leave Michigan where would you live and what's your dream vacation Oh, if I could leave Michigan. Okay, so back when I was in school, gosh, how old was I? I don't even remember. I was actually, no, yes, I was going into college. That's what I was doing. And I wasn't sure where to go, what to do, what I wanted to do with my life. And I was thinking about moving. And I was like, well, I want to live somewhere that's just like Michigan, but not, you know, here. Like, I wanted to get away for like 10 minutes. And the place that I ended up actually settling on was Oregon that was where I wanted to go and I was like look you know the seasons are great everything's great I want to live here it'll be amazing you know and I had it all like built up to be this great thing in my head and I definitely think that it could have been great I'm glad I didn't go um just because of you know my story with sickness and, and health all right what's another good question what's one thing in life you regret Ooh. That's good. I really, really regret ever thinking that I wasn't good enough the way that I was. Like, I spent years of my life with problems like mental issues, eating issues, um, being fat, never understanding, like, why I was a piece of shit, like, or why I thought I was one. You know, I wasn't one, but in my mind I was. And it just, it's stuff like that that I would give anything to be able to, like, undo and go back and tell my younger self, like, Paige, you're not that bad. 
Like, people do love you. People do care about you. Like, it's not worth thinking this shittily about yourself for the rest of your life. And I compared myself to everyone. Like, literally, it cost me friendships because I compared myself to people. And I would compare myself and, like, be inside my head so much that it made me hate like our friendship because I was like I'm not as good as them and I would self-sabotage and it was just ugh. I, re I just I regret my whole mindset in that time in my life I'm one of those people like if I have extra product like on my finger I just like I'm like I can't waste it and so I have to run it on my lower lash line does that make me weird like I don't want to waste anything ever I'm like do you know how expensive this is neither do I but it's expensive Ooh, girl we are coming together yes child Oh, where's your dream vacation? Oh, girl. Okay, it used to be, I did missions work overseas. Um, I went to Italy for missions, and I went to uh, the Philippines. Very, very different experiences. But I went to both places, and I have to say, like, for a long time, my dream has always been, like, oh, I want to go to Europe, I want to go to Europe. And now that I'm older and I have, like, more health complications and things like that, I really, like, that's not where my heart is anymore. Like, I, I don't crave the big vacation. I crave, like, seeing the United States because I feel like, obviously, I love the United States. It's my country. It's, like, my favorite thing in the world. And so, like, where would I want to be? Mm. Um, I think I'd want to go to Colorado, definitely, for sure. I want to go there. Um, I've got a friend that lives there, A. And B, I just think it is, like, the, so stunning. Like, just absolutely beautiful. And then um, I'd also like to go to California. Not because I have, like, friends there or anything, but because um, I just think there was... A, there's a place, I don't think, I know. There was a place that my grandma visited, my grandma, um, Judy. And she was... She passed away when I was five years old. And this woman was, like, legit my best friend. Like, the sun, it rose and, and sat in her... Sat. It, <laughs> it rose and sat back down. But seriously, she was like the light of my entire world when I was younger. And she sent me a postcard when she visited there when I was like three or four. And I still remember it. I think I still have it somewhere. And it's of the winding road. And it's basically, I, I think it's in San Francisco. And um, I've, I remember when I got that postcard, I remember I told my mom, like, I will go here one day. I want to walk where grandma walked. And she brought me back, you know, the key to the city, like a little bronze key, which I also still have. And I remember, like, I want to take that key and I want to go to that road and I just, I just want to be there, you know, and I want to be where she was because I was so little when she died and I've always felt like I just, I miss her. And if I could go there, I think it would just, it would mean a lot to me because I, I still miss her. Even though I don't hardly remember her, I miss the type of woman she was and just everything about her. She was, she had a lot of flaws and she did a lot of dumb shit, but she was the best. She was just such a good grandma and she tried her best. And you know, you, you could tell, like she had no idea what the hell she was doing with kids or family. And she was just still just such a great lady. And I would love to go there and be able to, like I said, walk where she walked and live where she lived and, and, and see everything that she saw. And just for like that second, I'd get to feel like I was there with her. And, like, I had that closeness with her again. Hey, Paige, put the palette down because all you keep doing is making your eyes look more intense. Time for some bronze. You know what one of the things that I love so much about YouTube is? I love how relational it is. Like, I feel like you guys want to see... Dude, my dog just snorted so loud. I feel like you guys want to see, like, get ready with me's and stuff like this. Be Only because, like, you want to hang out with me. Like, you want to be able to, like chill and like you know this is kind of us hanging out and I feel like that's one of the things that YouTube screwed up on for so long and now it's definitely starting to like come back around to that where you can turn on a camera and you can just like hang out with people and I just think that that relational side is what so many people need like people in their life like maybe they're lonely or they have anxiety and they need to feel like they're a part of you know, someone's life, and I just, I don't know, I love that part of it so much. I mean, the downside is definitely that, like, people think that they can have an opinion on your life, which is horse shit. Um, I was actually one of the YouTubers, oh, and you guys ask me this a lot, too, um, who is one of my, like, favorite YouTubers? Um, there's a couple that I like, um, one of them, um, she's not a small channel by any means, uh, she's smaller than the big names, but she's Alex from Learning to be Fearless, I really like her, um, she has, I think, like, 289,000 subscribers, something like that, and, um, 
I just, I really like her. I like her personality. And I was watching her this past week and it was absolutely heartbreaking because basically like all of YouTube just decided to like insert themselves into her business. Like she put up a music video. She was super vulnerable, you know, and she like revealed this this time in her life and like everyone was just like oh my god like Alan and which was her ex-boyfriend or you know not exactly ex but you know anyways all of her boyfriend business was none of our business and everyone like they try to make it their business and they started calling him names and stuff and she's like you guys like no that is none of your business like uh, she sh you share as a youtuber okay you share so much of your life with YouTube and it's like y you know if you want one thing for yourself like, should you not be entitled to that one thing? And if there was one area of her life that she wanted to, like, take off the internet for just a minute so they could work on their stuff or whatever, or even if they did break up, even if you did cheat, like, it, none of that matters. None of that is your business. Like, you might love her as the personality that you see online. You might think that you know her or feel a closeness to her. But, like, at the end of the day, that is none of anybody's business but theirs. And that's the one thing that I struggle with on YouTube is, like, people trying to make other people's lives their business as a way of scapegoating their own and I think that there are well-intentioned people on the internet I'm not saying that I don't think that there are like I think a lot of times people they'll say stuff like that or like oh my god like he's cheating or whatever and they come up with stuff like that and I honestly believe that they mean well god that highlight is stunning heaven's hue honey in the shade kitten because it's fabulous and I put on way too much in case you're like, Paige, what's your secret? Overdoing it. That's my secret. <laughs> I get, you guys are so funny. Like there'll be haters in the comments that are like, you put highlight all over your face and you make your face look so textured. And I'm like, bitch, my face is textured. I don't try to make it look textured. Okay. I just don't hide that it is like, I love highlight and I'm not going to stop wearing it just because you feel like it emphasizes my damn texture. Okay. You can get bent. I like it. This highlight, for some reason, does look a little bit funny, though, when I put it on my nose. I don't know why. It reflects so nice and light on, like, the, the apples of my cheeks. Or not the apples, but the arches of my cheeks. But for some reason, whenever I put it here, it looks, like, weird. So I have to go in with a different one. I don't know. And, like, I understand the argument behind, like, well, you put your whole life online. Like, of course, people are going to have an opinion. And I don't have an issue with people having an opinion. I think where I have, or not an opinion, but where they, I think where I have the struggling part is that people honestly feel like, you know, like you're a sim doll and you should be like listening to everything that they say and, and taking all their suggestions. And it's like, you know, that for me, I think is where I draw the line. <laughs> like you're, you, you're not me. You don't get to control me. Oof, if that does not just pop out those eyeballies, I do not know what does. Oh, and PS, that was the ColourPop highlight, but I have literally no idea what shade because ColourPop is so cheap that they don't even put the uh, shade names on anything because they're kind of dicks. I actually had an issue with ColourPop. I'll get into that in a future video. Um, for now, I am going to go finish up this. I'm going to add my a little bit of liner and my mascara, call it a day, probably a lipstick, and uh, get going. Oh my good lord, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead, I finished up, I threw on Jeffree Star... What was this? Family Jewels by Jeffree Star. I love it. It's one of my favorite fall time matte liquid lipsticks. I'm obsessed. Um, and I just threw on a little tight rim liner and this is kind of how the whole thing played out. I'm kind of digging, you know, the vibes. I have like this stretchy flannel thing and like my little vest and I'm just, I'm feeling all the everything. And I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for requesting this kind of video, for wanting to get ready with me and for wanting to like get to know me because I think that that's awesome. And um, as always, the social media handles are down below. I'm sorry if this video was stupid long. For some reason, me getting ready today took forever. Dude, my hair is like, oh, it's like way out here. Um, I'm going to go. I have some vlogging to do for the party today, and I've got to go get set up and stuff. And, um, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me, you guys, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Na, 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 na. Huh. <laughs> so narcissistic. <laughs>